Hi fam, welcome back to my channel. And for anyone who is new, nice to meet you. My name is Brittany Kelly. I'm a mom of four, and this channel is all about pregnancy, postpartum, motherhood, early education, lifestyle with my family. So if you're into that type of content, join my fam. Hit the subscribe button below and the notification bell so that you get all of the notifications on this content. Let's just get right into it. So today's video is how you can improve your baby's intelligence by just simply spoiling them. And by spoiling, I mean spoiling them with love, affection, and touch. This video is all about how touch and baby brain development go hand in hand and how you can implement it into your daily life with your baby so that you can help stimulate their brain development and growth. You know, I'm all into that. I love love to hear about neuroscience and baby development. It's my thing. I love it. So I'm excited to bring this information to you guys today. But first, I want to talk about a little story around spoiling the baby. So I don't know about you, but I have definitely heard over the course of my life, you know, to not spoil the baby right to put the baby down because they're going to get spoiled to not pick the baby up too much because they're going to they're going to get spoiled or to not respond to them as much because they're going to be spoiled and it always came with this negative connotation all you could see in your head was like a child later on being this super brat laying down on the floor having a tantrum in the middle of the mall while you are horrified <laughs> <laughs> is that not what you envision because that's what I see so when I would hear that you know growing up and everything I really thought that there was some truth to it turns out it's false it's such a myth you cannot spoil a baby with too much love and affection in fact when you are trying to help your baby grow and develop and become a smarter person it's actually to your benefit for you to pick up your baby and touch them and hold them and give them that positive, reaffirming love and affection. So when I had my first child, I remember this woman was over my mom's house. I brought my baby in. He was only four months at the time. So he couldn't even sit up on his own. And she's just like, why are you holding the baby? Mind you, I'm just sitting in my seat and he's sitting on my lap, not saying anything, not bothering anyone. In fact, she's just listening to our conversation. And it bothered her so much. She's just like, lay him down, lay him down. And I'm like, no. I'm just so happy as a first time mom, I was very confident in my instincts um, more than other people's unsolicited advice because my no was so correct. She was appalled. She's like, he's going to get spoiled. He's going to be too spoiled. And I'm like, that's okay. And I was so confident about it. But I'd already done some research as well and that really helps build your confidence as a mom. So I employ all moms to do as much research as possible, whether it's watching this video, looking down in, this, in the description box at some of the books that I've linked that back up some of the things that I'm saying in this video, doing your Google search, reading actual research, do it. Do your research and feel very confident and comfortable in all of your decisions as a mom. Okay, so let's get into some of the science. Let me look the part. Do I look the part with these? Or should I do these? Did you know that the brain and the skin actually come from the same germ layer in early development? That is right. The germ layer that I'm talking about only produces two organs the brain and the skin. So they are very, very connected. In fact, in the womb, skin sensitivity is one of the first and most complete senses that a baby has. So it's no surprise that infants are extremely sensitive when it comes to being stimulated by touch. And that touch gives a lot of input to the brain for them to process and grow and become smarter. So there was a study where animals were being compared based off of being held versus not being held. And the ones who were held actually had more gross brain mass than the ones who weren't. And they also had more synaptic junctions where the neurons in the brain actually connect. Another study of mothers who actually held their babies and did skin to skin after birth had babies that were not only more bonded to their babies, but five years later, those babies were tested and they actually scored higher 
on language and IQ tests. Also, Dr. Bruce Perry, a leading expert in brain development as well as a child psychiatrist, said that touch was as critical a nutrient as a vitamin. So please, don't put that baby down, spoil it with vitamin touch as much as you can. Now one of the ways that you can increase spoiling by not just picking them up, right? Because that's just one way. And did you ever think about the fact that a baby can be crying? A normal healthy baby, they're just crying and you go and you pick them up and then they stop. They just stop crying. This is something that is biologically normal for them to seek out touch as a nutrient, as something that they actually need. If they aren't crying for no reason, they are actually crying because they need to be held. They need to be touched. It's a real need. So don't be afraid of doing this. You are actually doing the right thing by holding your baby. It is not harming them. So one of the ways you can take touch up a notch is by massaging your babies. I'm pro baby massages and for good reason. Here are some of the benefits of massaging your baby. Better digestion, improved weight gain, better sleep, improved immune system, better stress management, and better muscle coordination and tone. Oh, but the list doesn't stop there. Baby massaging can actually help with the following. Colic, cradle crack, congestion, constipation, gas, teething, and dry skin. So physical touch that is gentle and positive is essential to a baby's mental, physical, and emotional development. It communicates acceptance, worthiness, safety, and love. So how can you implement baby massages into your daily routine? Well, let me tell you what I do. First, you need to create a schedule or routine. The normal time that I massage my baby is first thing in the morning after nursing. I'll change her diaper and then begin a baby massage. I also massage her at night after her bath time as a part of her nighttime routine. Number two, you need to make sure that the room is warm. Now babies release heat very easily from their body, so because they won't have any clothes on while they are being massaged, it's really important to make sure the room is the right temperature. I would say at least 75 degrees would be appropriate for a small baby. All right, number three, make sure that your hands are free of jewelry as well as your nails are well tended to so they don't scratch the baby. You wanna make sure your hands are safe for a gentle, easy baby massage. Next, you wanna make sure that your baby is in a calm yet alert state for a massage. If they are fussy, if they are too sleepy, sometimes that makes them even more fussy. So you want to make sure that they are in a calm and alert state. Next, you want to use an oil. Personally, I like to use three oils on my baby. Jojoba oil, grapeseed oil, and coconut oil. The first oil that I ever introduce my babies to is usually grapeseed oil um, because I'm concerned about whether or not they have an allergy to coconut oil. So once I establish that they are not allergic to coconut oil, that's when I start using it because that oil is pretty um, antibacterial and stuff, so I really like that one. It has lauric acid in it, which is really positive for them as well, so I like to use coconut oil too, but I don't like to use it on their scalp because my babies have coily hair, so because of that, I feel like the coconut oil actually blocks some of the moisture of really getting into their hair cuticles if I use it too much, so I try to use jojoba oil when I do the baby massage on their scalp. Remember to turn off the television or anything that can be very distracting, put on very calm, relaxing music, and that can also be a cue to your baby that a massage is about to happen. Speaking of cues, pay attention to your baby's cues. If they are not feeling it, if they are wiggling too much because they're being overstimulated, then you might wanna stop or pull back. One of the things you may notice if you have a newborn is that if you massage their tummies, they wiggle a lot, they look uncomfortable because they are. So you need to just relax a little bit, pull back, take your time. Over time, they will get used to the tummy rubs. So just touch a little bit and then move on to the extremities and focus on like their legs and their thighs and their arms and their back. They really prefer those areas more than their tummy. And then as they get older, they start to get used to it. There is not as, I don't know, ticklish <laughs> and it's fine. But definitely pay attention to your individual baby's cues. 
And lastly, make sure you check with your pediatrician when you start any new routines with your babies. Um, know that these things are not to be used as medical advice if you have concerns about them being constipated and stuff. Yes, baby massaging can help with it, but always talk to your pediatrician about what you're doing and just get their advice because only you and your medical provider know your individual baby. So definitely have these conversations and make sure that everything uh, is positive for your baby. So let's talk about how to baby massage. I like to start from the feet and work my way up. I like to use techniques such as Swedish milking, backstrokes, pruning the branches, and more. If you'd like to see a video specifically talking about baby massage techniques, then let me know in the comment section. Another aspect of touch that I really want to talk to you guys about is the fact that touch isn't always just about you touching your baby. It's also about your baby touching their environment. They learn so much through touch. In fact, another area that they use for touch is their mouths. They use their mouths for touch and taste. And actually the mouth and tongue processing cells inside of the brain take up a good amount of space compared to other areas of the body such as the forearm or the thighs. And that's because they really take in a lot of input through the mouth. So you will see babies at times like putting everything in their mouths. I know my kids did that, especially my girls. My girls put things in their mouths more than my sons. Um, I don't know, someone tell me if that was their experience too. But it's really important for them to be in a touch positive area where they are able to take in everything in their surroundings without being told no, including putting it in their mouths. The reason is because the brain is a self-growing organ, however, that growth is shaped by the input of your baby's experiences. So you want to make sure that you create an environment where they can touch and taste and feel different textures and different things that will give them more input for their brain to process and to learn from and grow. So thank you for watching another one of my videos from my Teacher Baby at Home series. Hopefully you have been here before and you have seen the other videos. If not, you can check out this playlist and I will see you in the comment section.